Ethos. I'm Paul Goldsmith, a creative coach and entrepreneur, and you're listening to the Creative Coach Cast. If you haven't downloaded the Ethos Radio app, that's Ethos, E-T-H-O-S, radio, available in Apple and the Google Play Store as well, you're going to want to do it because my guest today is one of the podcast hosts featured prominently, so important, Angela Derrick is host of the Fit Life Coaching Podcast. What makes Fit Life Coaching with Angela different? I'm explaining the things that I see pop up when I'm coaching clients with their weight loss or with their body composition changes they want to get. So I am a macro nutrition coach and an emotional eating coach. I basically help women lose weight. I help men too. I have male clients as well. Get the bodies that they really want to have when they feel frustrated, when they feel stuck, when they don't understand why things aren't changing or they don't know how to change their bodies in the way that they would envision or would dream of being able to change things. Maybe they're working out a lot and they're just not seeing all their hard work or they've been stuck at a certain weight and they don't know how to change it. Those are the types of clients that I work with. And so really with the podcast, what I like to go through is explain all of the things that I'm seeing, all the frustration points that people tend to have and the stories that they tend to have in their own head about why things aren't working, what's going on with that, and try to demystify this process. Because the truth is you can lose weight. Everyone can lose weight. You are capable of losing weight, but there are so many things that it feels like gets in our way. And then our story about whether or not we can or can't gets in our way. And I just like to demystify some of that and present the truth based upon science. I think more people should know because there's a whole lot of misleading information or misleading expectations that people have that prevent them from being able to actually see success. Well, thank you for including us guys, because I've benefited from listening to your show. I know that in your one-on-one coaching practice is primarily women. And I know most of the dieting industry is targeting toward women. In your most recent show, you shared the four habits of highly successful dieters. And there were a couple there that were surprising to me. Give us a, a little preview. What's one of those habits that you think would be most beneficial to the average person? Yeah, basically this actually comes from a national registry. The government actually has had a 30 year project where they have taken people and and it's self-reported people self-report in if they've lost 30 or more pounds, their weight loss success. And they've been able to go through and do research based upon what people are self-reporting in to figure out what is working for people and what is not. And it's fantastic. It's a fantastic resource that most people don't know about. And so what they basically came up with was there are these four areas that people who are successful tend to do these particular things. Number one, they are moving a minimum of about 30 minutes a day for five to six days a week. So there was a weekly average of how much intense movement and exercise that that highly successful people with weight management and weight loss are able to hit. And so that was a big one because, you know, when I see with my clients, a lot of times it's easy to tell yourself, I'm doing all the things. I'm going to the gym. I'm showing up. I'm doing all the things. But you may not realize that your level of activity might be significantly lower than where somebody who has actually achieved the thing might be. And that might be a process of ramping it back up and kind of learning, well, okay, I am showing up at the gym. I am walking six days a week, but is that enough? Or do I need to up the intensity slightly to really get where I need to go? So what they found was that vigorous activity, 30 minutes a day, five to six days a week was the average, was like the sweet spot for most people. But so what is that, right? So it's all relative. It it can be relative. So that's why I like to go by target heart rate. Like, where is your heart rate? And vigorous, we can say if my heart rate is within a certain range, then I can call that vigorous activity. Okay. So tell me, I mean, everybody's got a different idea of what healthy looks like for them. And it just seems so far out there. There's so many things to do. There's so many books. There's so much advice out there. Define healthy for us. What does healthy look like for you? Having just an overall well-balanced life, having the body that expresses who I am on the inside, on the outside, having as little stress as possible, you know, within reason, not all stress is bad, having a balance with having moments where I'm challenged and I feel a little stress, which is good challenge, 
but then having moments where I get to enjoy life and really celebrate and really be able to de-stress because we need both in our lives. Health is more than your body. Health has to do with what you think about, what you focus on, how you feel in your body all the time. And this is something that I tend to get into more with my emotional eating clients because people don't realize how much mental weight loss can be. It's it's about beliefs more than anything. It's about what you're thinking about and how you're feeling about yourself all the time. And then especially if we do things like stress eating or sabotage or binging or things like that, then that's a whole new area of health that we want to make sure we explore because you can have the most amazing body, right? Let's pretend like you're a bodybuilder or you're a fitness competitor or you're a bikini model or something, and you've got this amazing body. But if inside you're constantly feeling like you're not enough, you're constantly feeling something that's not congruent to how you want to feel or who you are, eventually that's going to catch up with you. And that's what I see with a lot of people who compulsively diet. They're actually trying to become enough. I literally had this conversation last night with a potential client that I was talking to. And it came down to, well, I keep trying and failing. I keep trying and failing. I keep trying and failing. And when we really looked at what her story was to herself, it was a moving goalpost. It was no matter how much I do or how much success I see or what the scale says, even if it's moving the right way, it's never enough. And so for her, the weight loss success was about finally being enough. But the truth is you can be skinny and not enough. You can be where you are today and fully enough. Your weight loss or your outward body is never going to be the thing that gives you confidence. You have to create that on the inside. And then the more that you feel the way you want to feel on the inside, the easier it is for the outside to begin to match. What does your daily self-talk look like? Where I may have conquered some of those things in my body and in my fitness in my 20s and early 30s and stuff. Well, now I'm having to take all of that work that I did in that area of my life. And now I'm having to apply it to new areas of my life. And there's always still limiting beliefs that I come up against, even in my levels of fitness. Like I'm always wanting to see what else can I do? What more can I achieve? So it's not like, we get to a finish line and we cross it and now we're set for life. It's that we get to a finish line. We take the learning from that journey and we say, now, where do I want to go? That's good. And I'm curious, why did you decide to get into wellness coaching, nutrition and, and weight loss coaching in the first place? What was your driving motivation? Pain, hmm. pain and freedom. One of the things in my life that is a guiding compass for me, one of my values is freedom. When I talk to mostly women, men too, about the lack of freedom they feel in their lives because of how they see their bodies and see themselves because of their bodies, my heart breaks. If I can help people see themselves different, begin to view themselves different, begin to believe different about themselves, and then begin to put the right strategies in place so that they actually get change and they get momentum, then they can have freedom in their lives. And when they get that freedom back, when they get to the place where they say, oh my goodness, I didn't think this was possible. And now it is for me. That is the most rewarding thing I could possibly think of. And, it, and it's an inner healing that takes place. Your body is not who you are. And that's what we have to get into is who are you really? And is the story you've been telling yourself about your body and your weight loss really true? Or what if you're more powerful than that? And what if you could see yourself different, make that shift? And then all of a sudden, you're going to get different results because when we believe we're somebody else, when we believe we're the person who's capable or worthy, then we start behaving different and then we start getting different results. I read a book that changed my life and it's called The Dorito Effect. And Oh, I've never heard of this one. Oh, you need to check it out. That sounds fantastic. I love the title. You will love it. Well, and I love Doritos and I do have a portion control problem. I'll just be honest. They, they purposely make them so that you can't They're engineered stop. Yes, so you don't are. stop because it yes. doesn't trigger the part of your brain that tells you you're full. They, yes. The mad scientists have figured out how to do that. Just look on the back, see all the chemicals and know that yeah. they've figured but out the But they're delicious chemicals. They chemicals. <laughs> the yes. problem is they know, how, they know how to hack your taste buds, but also the signals in your brain that tell you you're full they basically bypass those signals. And so no joke, I can eat a bag of Doritos and I have, and I don't feel full and I just keep going. Of course, I feel sluggish an hour or two hours later. And so that name caught me 
I haven't had a Dorito since, I'll tell you, because <laughs> they tell the story of how that originated. But the larger story is the flavor industry. The mad scientists have figured out how to make fake things taste like real things. And a Dorito is designed to taste like a taco, which had real food in it. But when you distill it down into a fried tortilla chip and just add the chemicals, it's not the same nutrition level, right? There's right. That's in everything. And so the biggest lesson there was you want to avoid things without the long labels. Just eat fresh fruit and vegetables and things that don't have a ton of ingredients, processed yeah. food. Essentially. I call them one ingredient foods hmm. because if it doesn't have like really a nutrition label or you look on the nutrition label and it says ingredient chicken. When we build our lives around eating these one ingredient foods, a lot of things begin to shift and change. And there's been tons of research done on just your vibrational frequencies of food and how they affect thinking and emotions. Yes. And people who eat lots and lots of fast food and lots and lots of processed food, there is a correlation between depression and other low states of energy and mood and, and vibrational energies and frequencies with that low vibrational frequency and energy in food. And when you're putting in crappy vibrational foods or crappy energetic foods or low energy foods, you can't expect to suddenly be like a high performance sports car all the time. It just isn't going to work. And your thoughts are going to be affected by those chemicals. Your thoughts are going to be affected by all of that stuff. And this is why you can't separate necessarily your emotions, your brain and your body because they all work together. All connected. I'll tell you the other thing. I mean, getting a proper amount of sleep is a part of that because oh, we, big time. we eat and drink things to try to pep us up, short-term gain. But what I learned was the half-life of caffeine, for example, is at least eight hours. And so if you have just a black coffee, so there's no sugar in it, the sugar is the first thing, but watching caffeine is critically important because you don't give your nervous system a break. Right. And when you're on edge, you're also tempted to eat poorly but you don't get proper rest. And so if you have a coffee at four or five o'clock in the afternoon, even if you go to bed at 10 or 11 o'clock, that caffeine is still in your nervous system and affecting, you can't have a deep sleep and restorative sleep, which causes you to not perform the next day. So for me, it was never about weight loss. For me, this whole wellness journey began with, I just want to have energy I want to have less anxiety and the sugar, the caffeine were huge parts of that. Having a little bit of sugar is not going to kill you. That's in that, but everything is loaded with it. It's, it's all about how much you're putting in your mouth. A little caffeine yeah. isn't going to kill you. It's how much and at what time and in what portions, right? Yeah. And you said a lot there, actually. There is, I'm going to be talking about this in a future podcast a lot more because it's so important. Sleep mm. is to me and stress and anxiety. They are two outliers to any journey. Uh, it, even if you're not looking for weight loss, because I have some clients, they, they don't need to lose weight. They're just trying to change their body composition. So this applies whether you're trying to lose weight or not. Sleep and stress and anxiety are the two things that will wreck your body and affect everything you're trying to do with whatever your health goals may be. And I see such a high correlation between some of the behaviors or some of the issues with weight and a lot of anxiety. Like I'm seeing half of what I'm doing with my private clients yes. is really trying to help them find better coping skills for anxiety. And that's something everybody has to deal with. I, I see it with my under eaters, restricted eaters. I see it with my gym rats because they're at the gym trying to cope with anxiety. <laughs> you know, you know, you're trying to create I, a release and however you best do yes. that it might be control. This is why you can't separate your body and the weight in your body yes. from your mind or your spirit, because all of these things have to be addressed and looked at for you to truly have health. And your body is just going to be following the direction of your mind and your spirit. So, and the sleep thing too, if you're constantly anxious and you're up all night, worrying about work, worrying about things, and you're not getting any sleep. When I was competing, cause I'm a former fitness competitor and stuff. My trainer would get on me. My coaches would get on me because I couldn't sleep any more than like six hours a night. And they're like, you're not going to win if you don't sleep because they know you're not going to drop fat. If you don't get quality sleep, you're not going to build muscle. If you don't get quality sleep, your body heals and restores itself in rest and in not being in a stressed state. But for most of the Western world, for most of the United States here, 
on like a scale of 10, one to 10, let's say we're constantly at least in a level two amount of stress. And even if your body is in a level two stress, which might be mild, or you may not even notice it, even if your body is noticing that it's in fight or flight and it can't drop weight, it can't heal, it can't restore, it can't do these things. That's why we have chronic illnesses, chronic diseases, things that, you know, people are not getting into a place of being able to fully rest, which is part of your autonomic nervous system. You're either in one or the other. It's it's not you're a little bit stressed. You to your body, you're either stressed or you're relaxed. There, it's an all or nothing thing. It's either on or off. And this is part of the thing that I also am trying to help most of my clients get through is how can we de-stress you more? Because eating is part of it, and what you eat will stress your body out. But then what you think, how you show up, needing the caffeine all the time, like you said, burning out your adrenals with the caffeine and the stress and all the other things, that's going to burn out your thyroid. That's going to burn out all your body's just going to crumble. It's just, you know, we've got to build your body back up and it takes rest and taking a priority and, and being adamant about those boundaries and allowing yourself to recharge, to really start to see those changes in your body and to really start to feel those changes that you need. What's a good place to start if you don't know where to start and you don't want to be guilted into, you know, massive changes. In fact, because life is, is stressful. If you have kids, you've got, you know, responsibilities, you can't just turn all those off and then go on a retreat and have all of your meals catered to the perfect dietary restrictions, right? Fast food solves a problem for us. And so maybe you don't have a two hours a day to prepare a healthy meal. How do you alleviate the stress? Maybe a good starting point. So how I see the stress is usually people are in this cycle, the stress cycle of chaos, and it just feeds on each other. And one thing will feed, will feed, will feed. And then you just keep going around this mountain and it keeps building and building and building. And my goal is always to begin to just interrupt the cycle a little bit and start getting momentum the other way, just a little bit. I would say that all stress is pretty much in our thinking. And usually when we start to change some of our feelings internally, which which we have more power over than we think, we're addicted to stress. I have clients that are afraid to let go of the stress. I'm afraid if I'm not stressed, I'm going to be in more pain than if I am stressed Mm -hmm. or I won't be motivated anymore or I won't, you know, so I hear that too, where it sounds like the the idea of getting rid of the, the stress or changing the lifestyle can be very frightening and very scary. But when you start to open yourself up and get curious, I like to start with curiosity because stress is judgment. And most of the stress that we carry in our lives is usually there's some veiled judgment statements that we're carrying around and we're making something mean something that it may or may not mean. And so if we can go from judgment to just flipping into, hmm, I'm curious, and that's a subtle shift, curiosity gives you a little bit more wiggle room, a little bit more freedom. It takes the weight of the judgment off. Man, this is so good because (laughs) I'm thinking taking the judgment out and getting curious That makes me think I heard this on the Threads podcast. You can check that out in the Ethos app. The very first guest was- She talked about that too. (laughs) A friend of mine, Derek Watson was the guest and he's brilliant. And he pointed out taking the judgment out of your choices and really just deciding that mindset is right for you and know that it's not final. You can make different choices. And he even pointed out that you know, we use the term sin as like, oh, it's a sin to eat that or this. Oh, yeah. It's like, well, no, it's a choice. It's a sin to eat carbs. And it's a the, sin to the eat original <laughs> meaning of the word sin is to miss the mark. It's an archery term. And so guess what? You have more arrows in the quiver. You didn't like what you ate today. So make a different choice tomorrow, but you can't get down in that death spiral of yes. never good enough. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. It's like, that's exactly what it well, is. Okay. A death make a spiral. different choice. You know, some people have gone through some serious difficulty and trauma, and we are not therapists. Those are really important things to to process and work with a professional counselor or a therapist for your, you know, working out trauma. But as far as moving forward, if you want to make better choices, it kind of starts with one decision at a time, one choice at a time, and nothing's final. I have found your coaching exceptionally beneficial. Well, I'll give you another example from one of your shows, like carbs aren't evil. And I'm like, no. what? you're telling me, like, I thought carbs were like the biggest problem in the universe. And you're telling me they're not. The way they they're, market them. Right. Absolutely. Right. 
what has really motivated me is food freedom. And many people think food freedom means I can eat whatever I want. Actually, actual freedom is not, I can do whatever I want. Actual freedom is I can eat all the things, but I can also choose not to. Freedom of choice. That is freedom. Because if we always have this compulsion to eat the cookie or drink the drink or have the beer or, you know, or overeat or whatever it is, then that's not freedom. That's compulsion. Freedom is saying, oh, cookie looks good. Do I really want the cookie? Let me think about it. Hold on. Yeah, I'm good. I don't need the cookie. Freedom, I discovered, is I can sit next to a cookie and it doesn't call me. It means you get to choose. And if I can help someone create that in their life where they don't feel like, you know, they can go to a party and they can choose what they want to eat or choose not to, then that to me is the win because that's what it freedom is. is in life. It's the same thing with spending. It's the same. You take any habit you want, any area of your life. And if we can have ultimate dominance over I'm going to spend or I'm not going to spend, or if we can have an experience that freedom, then we can have anything that we want in life. That's powerful. And I think the key there is if you want to get curious for a moment and book a free discovery call with Angela, you can do that very thing in yeah. the Ethos radio app. Come on, let's play with possibilities. That's right. And <laughs> see if maybe Angela's a good fit as your coach or just have a conversation. You're not making a lifetime commitment. It's nope. a free call. There's a menu button in the upper right-hand corner of the Ethos radio app. You just click on Fit Life Coaching Discovery Call. And you can get Angela's calendar there. And I'm sure you'd love to have a conversation. Absolutely. Never any obligations, always just exploring possibilities and what the right next step looks like for you. And I'd love to talk to you. If you have any thoughts or questions about today's show, I would love to hear from you. Reach out on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at Paul J. Goldsmith, or you can send me a text to 559-574-3210. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.